Right, so now let's get into the review of qualifying for the 2019 Monaco Grand Prix. And as ever, it was a very exciting session around the streets of Monte Carlo. But first, before we get into the teams, let's look at the results of qualifying at Monaco. So on pole position, Lewis Hamilton from Valtteri Bottas in second, Max Verstappen finished up in third with Vettel fourth, Gasly fifth, Magnussen 6th, Ricardo 7th, Kvyat 8th, Carlos Sainz 9th, Alexander Albon in 10th, and then Hulkenberg, Norris, Grosjean, Raikkonen, and Antonio Giovinazzi were knocked out in Q2. And then knocked out in Q1, shockingly, Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari at his home Grand Prix, then Sergio Perez, Lance Stroll, George Russell, and Robert Kubica. But let's now go into the teams. Now, Mercedes, again, getting pole position and another uh, front row lockout. Great for them, of course. Now, it wasn't easy because Max Verstappen at times was very close to Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton, but when it mattered most, Max could not match the speed of the Silver Arrow car. And when it came to the qualifying battle at the end between Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas, it was Hamilton who came out on top. Valtteri Bottas, I have to say, his first run in Q3 was fantastic, a 1.10.2. And at the time was a new lap record. But then after Valtteri Bottas made a mistake into Portier on his final run, Lewis Hamilton banged out the lap and took pole on a 1 minute 10.1. Very deserved for Lewis Hamilton. And for the first time since, I'd have to say Australia, he got his qualifying lap absolutely right. And Mercedes are really set to dominate the Grand Prix tomorrow. They do have the best car. And I would be honestly surprised if they don't win tomorrow's 2019 Monaco Grand Prix. But next up is Ferrari. You have to say, had a terrible session. Now, Sebastian Vettel in P4 had a very messy day, of course, in practice three. Uh, crashed at turn one at saint Devaux And missed a lot of practice three. Did get out for qualifying, but did make a few errors. He touched the wall at the exit of the swimming pool. And then on the entry to Tabac in q3 hit the barrier quite hard but was lucky to get away with it and ended up in p4 and honestly i think sebastian vettel did the best he could with the car he did have today but charles leclerc p16 for number 16 what a disaster and it doesn't really uh come down to charles leclerc and hit it, and it being his fault it comes down to ferrari Charles Leclerc, I think after his first couple runs in Q1 was about P6 or P7. Then he got called to be weighed by the FIA. He was, and then was put back in the Ferrari pits. Now, we could all see that he was at risk of being knocked out. Even Charles Leclerc thought he could get knocked out and he should go out again. But Ferrari, with their famous strategy and with their infamous strategist Inaki Rueda decided to not go out and to take a risk that did not pay off and I could see him being eliminated coming a mile off because the track in Monaco as we know ramps up a lot and he fell foul of that. Ferrari again such a disaster there's such a disgrace honestly this season they can't get anything right. How Inaki Rueda is still at Ferrari I do not know. I honestly don't know. Please comment down below, guys. Why is an argue Rueda for you at Ferrari still? Let me know because I do not get how he has not been fired one a long time ago and how he can't be fired right now. He's so poor at what he does. But for Ferrari, not good enough as a team. And tomorrow is not going to be a good race at all. In fact, it will be quite a tough one. Next up, though, is Red Bull, who I think, with Max Verstappen, did the best they could. P3 and about half a second off pole. Max, again, in 2019, getting the best out of his Red Bull car. And that's all you can really ask of Max Verstappen to do. And I think he did do that today, so great for him. And then Pierre Gasly in P5. Uh, I think Pierre could have gone into P4, because I think the Red Bull is definitely faster than the Ferrari around Monaco. But... As we've seen in 2019, Pierre Gasly has been underperforming quite a lot. So not exactly a surprise that he hasn't put it in P4 there when he should have. But there you go. Red Bull, third and fifth. And they're looking good, I think, for the Grand Prix uh, tomorrow. But now let's quickly get into the midfield. 
first starting off with Renault. A better qualifying, a much better qualifying than I was expecting for Renault. P7 and P11. Daniel Ricciardo, similar to Max Verstappen, getting the best out of the car that he does have. And getting a result that was really, I think, for Renault after Thursday practice, where they were so poor, it was unexpected for them to end up P7 with their best car, but they did. And Daniel Ricciardo did great. Hulkenberg, I think, will be disappointed to get knocked out in P11. I think the car was definitely quick enough for a top 10 finish, but Hulkenberg missed out. But for Renault, things are looking better. Let's hope for them in that Constructors fight, they can close the gap to P4 on the Constructors tomorrow, which they absolutely have to do. Talking of P4 on the Constructors, let's go on to the team that are holding P4 on the Constructors, McLaren. I think McLaren got the best they could out of their car, ending up qualifying in P9 and P12, I believe. I was not expecting that after practice on Thursday and practice on Saturday morning. I didn't think they would be that competitive when it came to qualifying, but they were. And Carlos Sainz, a guy who is famously great around Monaco, once again produced uh, what he needed to when it mattered. And did a great uh, job, I think, to get into P9. Lando Norris, yeah, he could have done better. But I don't think Monaco is one of his uh, best tracks. But McLaren, a good qualifying. And yeah, they definitely do. If they're going to pull away further in P4 on the Constructors, they need to build on that qualifying result. Alfa Romeo next. Um... Everything up to qualifying was looking very good for them. They looked like they could be a top 10 runner, but ultimately disappointed and ended up in P14 and P15. That's where I thought they would be coming into the weekend. But after Thursday practice and Saturday uh, practice three, they were looking better than that. But they ended up where I thought they would be in the end, P14 and P15. And well, going into the Grand Prix, I don't think things are looking that great. I don't think the Alpha is going to be that great in terms of race pace. And I expect Antonio Giovinazzi to get a grid penalty for a clear block on Nico Hulkenberg. He should get a penalty. It was so obvious blocking Hulkenberg on the entry to the Rascast. So not looking great for Alpha after qualifying and going into the Grand Prix tomorrow. The Haas though, uh, for at least one of their drivers, looking good. Kevin Magnussen, one of the stars of the day, P6 in the Haas, not that far off, Pierre Gasly and Sebastian Vettel either, great job, and he really has again showcased how good of a driver he has uh, been in the last couple of years, and why he is very, very quick, and that is such a great result for Haas, because after Australia, and after the three consecutive races in uh, Bahrain, Shanghai, and Baku, where they didn't score points, they had to start responding to that poor form, and it seems as though they are after that massive update for them at the Spanish Grand Prix with plenty of new parts. They're great for K-Mag. The Grosjean, uh, not so good, but I don't think Roman really got it hooked up at all around Monaco this weekend. But for K-Mag, great result, and he should be in, I think, for a strong Grand Prix tomorrow. Next up, Toro Rosso. I don't think qualifying for Toro Rosso was as good as it could have been, but it was still good. P8 and P10 for them, Kvyat ahead of Albon. But as I said, it could have been better because I think coming into qualifying, they really did have a good opportunity of being at the front of the midfield like Kevin Magnussen and Daniel Ricciardo are. But in the end, didn't quite have the speed when it mattered in qualifying three. But still, P8 and P10 on the grid is great for them. And I believe that is their first double Q3 appearance of 2019. So great for Toro Rosso. And they are looking very strong for a strong double points finish in Monaco tomorrow. And Racing Point next up. Uh, Racing Point. They do have, as I've been saying this weekend, the worst car in the midfield. And they showed that again, qualifying 17th and 18th. Nothing they could really do. And in tomorrow's Grand Prix, I expect it to get even worse 
for that team because I don't think they'll have good race pace either. That team, Racing Point, has a lot of work to do. And last of all, of course, is Williams, who are at the back. But that is it, guys, for the review of qualifying for the 2019 Monaco Grand Prix. Tomorrow is, of course, race day. Don't forget to join us for the race watch along tomorrow. It sure is. If there is rain, which is reported to be coming, and if it does come, it sure is going to be exciting.